Okay, so this tutorial's just going to be about uh, creating a bouncing ball animation, but in a procedural way. I've got something set up here, which is not procedural, <laughs> as an example. So this one is just simply using some shape animation. So we've, we've animated the position Y, so we're going up and down, but we've also, as we're, as we're moving through these stages of the, of the bounce, we've animated these keys so that the shape changes throughout. And you can see we've got it at the other end here. Okay, so that's one way to do things, but we want to we want to do this in a more procedural way. So let's just show you how to do that. I'm going to start by creating um, my ball. This uh, so I've just alt click there on the on the ellipse, and let's just start by animating it in in position Y. So let's have the first frame will be three hundred, and let's set a key. Let's move to frame fourteen, and let's go up to positive three hundred. And then at 28, back down again to negative 300. Okay, so we've kind of got our up and down there. Now, the first thing we want to do for this particular tutorial is, is loop that animation. Um, so if we switch into the graph editor, we can just simply select the curve and then we can hit this button here to, to loop it. And as you can see, that's now carrying on. The other way you can do that is to right click and have loop after and looping. And obviously the other thing we need for a bouncing ball has a sort of parabolic curve in the way that it moves. So if we just alt click the key at the top there, I'm just gonna drag these out a little bit. Obviously you do this to your taste and then let's just see how that's looking. Okay, so that's fine. But what you'll notice is there's no deformation at the bottom. So really it should be squashing and as it bounces, it should be deforming. Now we can do that in Cavalry with a deformer called, surprisingly, Squetch, and that stands for squash and stretch. So if we add that using the plus button there, and then we're gonna load up its uh, uh, UI. The first thing we want to do is pin the deformation to, the, well, in the case of the bouncing ball, the bottom of the ball, because it's gonna hit the floor. So if we just set pin to bottom here, and then as you can see, as we now change the amount here, so now we're stretching, now we're squashing. You can see that's happening from the bottom. Okay, so let's add some keys to this. So let's start with minus 50, and we'll put a key there. Just switch back to the time editor. Let's move forward. I'm just gonna um, command or control and arrow key to move forward. And let's just key that to zero. And then let's go to the other end. I'm gonna go back one key, key that to zero again, forward one, and minus 50. Now we need to make sure this is also looping, so let's just flip back to the graph editor, select and loop, and let's just hit play. Okay, so there's something starting to happen there. But what we really need is, um, we need a sort of moment of delay really in this point here as it hits the ground. So to do that, let's just add a key here. So we'll add another key, and we're gonna set that to minus 300 as well. So we've sort of got this pause, and let's just, um, I'll just zoom us in here and let's just drag this key out to that point there. So we've just got that little bit of deformation. Obviously you can play with this, do whatever sort of character you want in there. So now we've got something a bit more like this, very subtle, but it's just a little change and you can, as I say, you can play around with that one. Now the other thing we can add here just to add a bit more realism to the deformation is we can add some bulge. If I just drag this back to frame zero, Bulge can be used to push the shape out further and we can actually use a graph to really customize that shape too. I'm gonna open up the bulge graph here. Now I know what I know what, what shape I would like this to be. And I need to graph something a bit more like this, but obviously you can play around with this and you can do whatever you like. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm happy with that. And let's say that our first frame is uh, let's go with 50. Again, just for a round number, we'll go forward a frame. Uh, bold, that needs to be naught. And we'll do the same at this end. So we're gonna key that, and we're gonna key this to 50 here as well. Okay, and away we go. Nope, we need to also make sure the bulge is also looping. So there we go. Now let's add some motion blur to this. I'm just gonna check, enable motion blur in the project window here, and then I also need to enable it on the shape itself. 
So I just need to check that box. Okay, so not perfect, but let's say for the purpose of this tutorial, that is exactly what we wanted. Um, but where things get interesting now is that because this is built in a procedural way, we can actually change, we can go back and change the radius here. So even though we've changed the radius, it actually still works. All the deformation is still valid. But one thing you will notice when I did that, if I just go back to frame zero, as I change the um, radius there, you can see that the, the base was, was moving position. Now we can set things up for that not to happen. And the way we can do that is by adding an align deformer. Now I actually need, I should have really, if I'd been doing this um, in an intelligent way, I should have really added that first. So we just need to swap those two rounds and have the align happen before the scratch. And now if I then open up the align UI, I need to set the Y to one. And as you can see, the pivot now is at the bottom there. So as I now change the radius, that happens from that from that bottom point. So the floor is effectively in the same place. Okay, and so we can do that in playback and we can just, we can now make it bigger. Obviously if it has a sort of heavier, more weighty feel, or we can get a bit smaller, a bit more bouncy, fun, lively. Okay, so let's just put that back to something like that. Now let's take this a bit further. Let's, let's play with Cavalry's architecture here. Um, I'm gonna add this to a duplicator, but in order for the position transform or the, the the animation that we've put onto the position. I need to group this first because the um, duplicator by design will ignore this. But if I put it into a group, it will respect it. So I'm going to group. So I'm just hitting Command or Control G to make a group there. And then with that group selected, let's just Alt click the duplicator up here. And let's load that up. Now let's have a linear distribution. And let's spread those out a little bit. And let's have some. Let's have that many. Eight and away we go okay so nothing particularly exciting there but because of the duplicator we can actually add something we can add a stagger to the shape time offset so i'm going to right click here add behavior stagger and load that up now as you can see they're all offset now a little bit in time and we can have a bit of fun here with these sorts of things whatever you want to do get a bit crazy Okay, and then let's just keep going with this idea. So again, because we can, we've still got control of the radius on these circles, we can actually go in and add a random here as well to have lots of different size or different radius circles. So if we add a random, uh, the default values will be a little bit off. So let's set the minimum to 50 and the maximum to 150. And as you can see, we've now got bouncing balls of different radiuses, but actually we've only animated one. And if we went back and changed an animation on the original one, all these would update. Obviously you can change the seed and do whatever you want to do now. Of course, change our stagger. So there you go. Just some fun you can have with um, thinking about animation in a procedural way. Thanks.